Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm going to try that one more time. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> there we go. That sounds a little more energetic. Good morning. My name is Reverend Andrew Moeller, and I use he, him pronouns. Um, welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Society. This is their first Sunday back after kind of our summer break, and it is great to have you all here with us. Um, we also want to welcome those who are joining us today on Zoom. Um, one of the things that we are going to do a little bit differently is um, uh, starting today, if you are visiting us for the first time, or maybe if it's been a little while, we're going to provide an opportunity, not a requirement, but an opportunity to introduce yourselves after the um, the announcements. So um, uh, you just say your name and uh, what brings you here today is always kind of a nice way to get to know people, but it's a way of welcoming uh, uh, new people to our midst. But um, if you are not so comfortable getting up and standing up in front of a group of people that you don't know and <laughs> saying your name, uh, it's okay to not do that. So I just want to provide space, but we would love to provide you with that opportunity. Um, before we get started today, one of the other wonderful things about kind of coming together at the uh, beginning of our program year is that sometimes we have new faces, and I want to introduce Sojourner, um, who is our new music director. Um, this is her, um, it's, it's not her first service with us. If you see her and you think of the name and you look at the face and say she looks familiar, she was our uh, collaborative accompanist during um, COVID when we were online only. So uh, that's why the music sounds very familiar and the name and the face as well. So welcome, Sojourner. <laughs> um, I'm now going to invite John uh, to come up and offer some announcements. Good morning. How are you doing? Yeah? Okay. So right after today's service at 11.30, oh, by the way, don't forget to come back and join us for refreshments after today's service. But at 11.30, um, I believe Rissa is climbing the tower and going to play a little bit of chiming for us. This is also being the second Sunday. Uh, we traditionally collect donations for local food security programs. There's a few goodies down there and a, and a couple outside. But please uh, consider bringing some food in on second Sundays when we collect for local food security. Today, also right after the uh, service at 11.30, the Spirit of Drumming group will meet here in the sanctuary. And I wish to announce that this week, uh, Reverend Drew is starting up his weekly uh, meditation gathering, Tuesdays at 5.30. So this Tuesday from 5.30 to 7, uh, Drew will lead the first meditation group. And next, we have a special announcement from Aaron Seavey. Hello, everyone. This is a very special, exciting announcement, actually. Um, Kaz and I have been working together to create um, some UUSB apparel. Um, she created a design because she's the creative person in the duo here. And I worked with a local company that I've worked with in the past, and we have some really cool items I'm really excited about t-shirts, hoodies, winter hats, baseball hats, um, grocery bags, and some uh, really nice canvas totes that I guess are all the rage right now, canvas totes. So there will be an email coming out with a link to the ordering site this week. And uh, you can go on, place the order. All orders have to be in by October 15th. And then once they're made, the items are made, I'll be bringing them to um, church for people to pick up. It's a simple process. So um, if anybody has any questions or needs any help with the ordering or anything, feel free to contact me. My information will be in the email that comes out. So keep an eye out for that. 
Thank you, Aaron. You know, you use swag is all the rage this year, as all the cool kids will be carrying it, so uh, don't forget to pick some up. And now Reverend Drew has an announcement or two to share with us. Um, one of the things I've uh, been wanting to do for a couple of years that we're going to start um, next Sunday, we'll be doing once a month, is what I'm calling Worship Lab. So at 1130 after the service, I'm inviting anybody who wants to come downstairs to my office and we're, we'll be brainstorming the theme for next month, which is deep listening. Um, and also, if you have a thing that you think would be like a really awesome worship, worship service, but you're not quite sure that you want to take th that role on, but you want to share an idea, come down to the worship lab, and we're going to just try mixing it up a little bit and seeing if we can play off of each other's creativity to enhance our worship experiences going forward. So that'll be happening once a month, and you can look in the... Um, uh, e-news and the chimes going forward, but it wasn't in this year, this month's chimes uh, newsletter. So uh, uh, mark your calendars for next Sunday and we'll see what happens. So now I want to um, provide that moment if you are visiting um, for the first time or maybe it's been a little while since you've been here and you want to introduce yourself, um, Sue here will bring a microphone to you. And again, just your name. Um, hello, we've got lots of new people here and you raised your hand, you're willing to tell us who you are, excuse me. Hi, good morning, my name is Rachel Lawrence and I am Marge's stepdaughter. My husband and I are, um, my husband David, and I are visiting from Richmond, Virginia. We bring greetings from First UU of Richmond, Virginia. Also, um, my brother Ian is here um, visiting for the first time. He's a little shy, I think. <laughs> I'm just very happy to have them all. I bet. Are there others that would like to just stand up and say hello? Oh, here we go. While I'm walking over there, the book sale is going to be September 28th from 8 to noon. Put that on your calendar. I'm Josh, and this is Ben. We, um, we were here once before. We took a journey to northern Maine for school, and we're back, and we're glad to find a nice, wholesome community of people here. So thank you for having us. Thank you, guys. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? Welcome to you all. Great to have you joining us this morning. Let's now take a moment to just pause and come into this space. As we return to our full strength program year of people returning from uh, being away for vacations and um, special events and visiting and family and wandering out in nature. Just notice what it feels like to be here in this space now. If you're at home, what does it feel like to be in the space that you're in? Just notice what the temperature is. Is the wind or the air moving? How is it with your soul? Take another deep breath or two, come into the space, allow yourself to be fully present and know that each and every one of you are welcome here just as you are.
This morning, our chalice will be lit by Aaron Seavey. The flame of our chalice this morning is a symbol of the warmth and brightness of our connections. The flame lights our way back together again from our separate summer lives, and it lights our way forward into this new church year of promise and renewal. I now invite you to rise in body and or in spirit to sing our opening hymn 347, Gather the Spirit. I'd now like to invite all of our young people um, to come down um, for our story for all ages. Um, you are um, also welcome if you want to stay in your seats with your folks, that's okay too. Um, and um, for folks who are visiting, we have a table down here of activities and stuff for, for young people um, during the service if you uh, want to uh, take advantage of that. So. <laughs> Not a lot of people today, yeah. Or they're being shy, and that's okay too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming down and being brave. <laughs> All right. <laughs> ah, so today um, we are coming back together um, after I said earlier uh, being gone for a little while. So it's really good to see familiar faces. And I, I've noticed that some of our young people who I haven't seen since I think maybe May 
have gotten a little taller and a little bigger. Um, and um, I think there's also a couple of folks that I've seen that are kind of new um, that I might not know really well. So my name's Reverend Drew. Um, and today we're talking um, about uh, the importance of coming together as a community, of being able to um, be strong individuals ourselves, but also at the same time, simultaneously, being able to care for others. And when we're talking about water, water is a substance that um, unites us all, right? We're all connected through water. We all need water to live. All life that we know requires water. And so we celebrate using the element of water um, to um, help us remember that we are connected to each other through that life-giving, nourishing substance of water. And it made me think of one of, I think, one of my favorite stories that comes from my childhood. How many people here have ever gone to summer camp? Yep, or camp, yep, Ferry Beach, places like that. So this is a story that comes from my, the summer camp that I used to attend. Um, and the title of the story is Each for All and All for Each. So it happened that um, early on in the history of this camp, there were a bunch of campers who had, were hiking around the boundary of the camp, and it's something like seven or eight miles. It's a long hike. And they had gotten to kind of the far edge of the boundary, and they decided that it was time to head back. But you know how people get, they want to compare themselves with each other, right? So they decided what we're going to do, and they decided they're going to have a race back to camp to see to the main camp, uh, to the little stream right by the dining hall, and they were going to see who was the fastest person. You may have heard this story because I like it so much. I tell it every once in a while. I haven't heard it. I think I know okay. Where it's going. Oh, you think you know where it's going? Maybe you hadn't heard it. Okay. So at any rate, they decided they're going to have a race, and they all kind of lace up their running shoes. Actually, they were wearing hiking boots. They were lacing up their hiking boots and stretching out a little bit, and they're going on your mark, get set, go. And they started running. You can change the slides so you can see the trails that they're running down these trails through the woods, up hills, down hills. This, the distance that they had to go was almost three miles. It was a long way to run, and it was a hot, sunny day. So they were running and running and running and running and running. And do you think they all ran at the same speed? No. So the first person, the fastest person, got all the way to the dining hall and stood by the stream, and th in those days, they didn't have drinking fountains, so they just had a ladle hanging on the bridge that went over the stream, and if you wanted to get a drink of cold water that came from the spring there, you would just take the ladle and you'd dip it right in the stream. Great water. So the first runner comes tearing down the hill, comes right up to the spring, dips that ladle into the water, gets ready to quench their thirst, and the second runner comes running down the hill. And they look at the water, and they look at the person who's coming down the hill, and they look tired and sweaty and exhausted. And they look at the water, and they hand the ladle to the next person. So what do you think happens? That second runner, yeah? He's right on this, by the way. Yep. So, so he, Cam, who's the, the, the second runner, getting ready to take a sip, sees the third runner coming, tired and exhausted, and he hands the ladle to the next runner. A small runner, but growing runner. <laughs> and this goes on and on and on till the very last person who was running was the person who ended up with the ladle and was the first person to drink that cool, ice-cold, refreshing water. 
So what does that story tell us about things? Ah, that's a good one. You don't have to be fast. You can take your time. And I would even add that the, the last runner was just as important as the first runner, just as deserving, just as in much need with, of, of having that cold refreshment. But it was the runners all passing the ladle down to the last runner that was showing concern for the other people that were part of the group, right? And so that's a one way that we can think about um, what, how we are as a community. Each of us are all individuals. We all have different abilities. We all run faster or slower. Um, some people uh, prefer to walk hmm? um, or um, ride in a wheelchair or um, have a different mo me or a, a means of, of getting around. But everybody is important. Everybody matters. And it's important for us to support each other in our differences yeah so each for all each of us are supporting each other and everybody is also supporting us <laughs> if, if you had the ladle you would have done, poured it over your head or poured it over the head of the person who's coming by and a bigger scoop for the other person. There you go. So there's different ways of doing it. But uh, you, I think, you understand, I think you, you're, you're understanding what I'm saying here. So that's our story uh, for all ages today. Each for all and all for each. Great. Thank you. And we'll sing you back to your seats. back on there we go and I forgot to tell them to switch the slide so go to the next slide and this is the stream that is still there I visited that stream this summer it still exists so today we begin um, uh, the new program year and in doing so we join with many of our sibling Unitarian Universalist congregations all over North America who engage in this unique Unitarian Universalist ritual of water communion. The ritual that we practice today is a variation of a ritual that began over 44 years ago when two women, Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shurek Longview, were asked to create a worship service for the Women in Religion Continental Convocation of Unitarian Universalists, which is a long name. In creating that service, McDade and Longview wanted to create a new ritual that, quote, spoke to our connectedness to one another, to the totality of life, and to our place on the planet. They included a symbol of women's spirituality, water. They wrote, quote, water is more than simply a metaphor. It is, an ele it is elemental and primary, calling forth feelings of awe and reverence. Acknowledging that the ocean is considered by many to be a place from which all life of our planet came, it is the womb of life. It is the amionic waters that surrounded us each prenatally. They said that then they realized that this worship service was for them a new story of creation. They, they said, we chose water as a symbol of that empowerment. Since that time, congregations celebrate this ritual on the second Sunday of September. We offer gratitude to Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shurek Longview for bringing forth this ritual. 
Entering into the fall season in a new congregational cycle means different things to each of us. For some of us, it means new beginnings. Maybe you are starting school at a new school or a new grade. Maybe you're starting a new career or a new job or entering into retirement. Perhaps you are moving into a new home or awakening to a new spiritual understanding or a new phase of life. As we move into these new experiences or in continue in familiar patterns, this water communion ceremony provides us a moment to pause and to remind ourselves the miracle of being alive and our deep interconnectedness symbolized by the life-giving, sustaining substance of water. Water also provides us with space to remind ourselves of our own vulnerability, of needing to be nourished and supported by the moisture of places like this beloved community. It reminds us that at times this beloved community can be just as nourishing to our, us spiritually as water is to us physically. In preparing for this service, I have a deep awareness of how important it is to speak about interconnectedness in these times. Today I'm aware that there are thousands or maybe even millions of people who are displaced by forest fires and other natural disasters. People who are, in suffer or are suffering intense heat waves and flooding caused by climate change. I am aware that as I speak, there are hot spots around the globe like Palestine and Israel, where people are struggling for safety, for freedom, and just being able to survive. I'm aware that there are many wars and conflicts happening all around the globe, Ukraine, Myanmar, Sudan, Bangladesh, many, many other places. I am also aware that many beautiful and amazing people in our country are not afforded their full privileges of being human because of discrimination based on ethnicity, race, sexual orientation, or immigration status. I am aware that people who can bear children are denied access, the freedom to choose what happens to their bodies while others who are born into difficult economic circumstances are left to struggle to overcome the overwhelming and oppressive economic barriers that um, uh, prevent them from being able to be fully who they are. Things are hot, really, really hot, and they are getting hotter. So it is important today that we pause for this moment and remind ourselves that in the middle of all that is going, around, uh, going on, that underneath all the chaos and strife, there is still beauty and our Unitarian Universalist values that help guide us and navigate through these very difficult times that can serve in a way as a soothing balm Values that offer moisture to our awareness of our interconnection and our values of faith that puts love at the center of all we do that is the antidote to the stressful headlines that are abound. What we need is mo the moisture of community that saturates and nourishes our souls slowly and steadily, constantly providing that moisture. That allows us to absorb the wisdom that we need to grow into our values of equity, justice, kindness, and freedom, and also that allows us the space to transform and hope for a thirsty world. It is therefore fitting that we begin our program year with this ritual that reminds us of our interconnectedness to each other and to all beings through the symbol of water. I don't know how your mouth is feeling right now. Mine's a little dry, so I'm going to take a sip of water. But I'm going to invite um, Kaz, our um, 
director of spiritual exploration to um, come forward and offer our what? And Kaz will join us momentarily, but although oh. we didn't print it in the program, the morning offering ah, okay. will now be collected ah, from our beloved community. Thank you. See? Thank you for your generosity. It takes a village. <laughs> <laughs> And in September, half of the undesignated funds in the plate will go to Partners for Peace. Partners for Peace works to end domestic violence in Penobscot and Piscataquis counties. receive It is with gratitude that we receive this morning's offering to support this beloved community and partners for peace and for the work that they work, do to support victims of domestic violence. Blessed food. Now we are uh, going to be uh, gifted a wonderful um, tradition of bringing some moisture to our service. Hi, here I am. Um, today we're going to be doing a virtual rainstorm. I know some of you have done this and some of you haven't, so I'm going to explain it because then I'm going to turn the mic off and you're just going to follow me. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing some motions. And when I'm in front of you, you should start doing that motion. And you should keep doing it until I come back and give you a different motion to do. Uh, motion slash sound. Um, that's it. You'll, you'll see what it does. It's really cool.
Thank you, Kaz. <clears throat> Um, and I, well, you'll have to remind me next year to make sure that we bring virtual towels for everyone to dry off <laughs> afterwards. So, <laughs> so in a few minutes after our special music, we'll move into our water communion ritual. We'll begin with calling out each cardinal direction. Um, and offer some spiritual attributes that we associate with each of those directions. As we call out each direction, John and I will, John or I will invite people to come forward and share their sample of water and pour that into one of the four direction bowls. And um, then you can share a little bit about where that water came from. Um, and how that water has um, uh, affected you or the, uh, where that water came from, how that has affected your spiritual outlook or experience that you may have had over the summer. Um, if the descriptions that we give for the different directions um, seem um, like they don't quite match a place or a feeling or emotion of the sample of water that you brought with you this morning, um, um, that's okay. You can choose um, to one of the directions um, um, just randomly, or maybe um, as a um, as a reference to where you collected that sample of water from, um, from uh, as it relates to this building. So if you went out east or you went out to uh, went out west or whatever, you can you can use that as a guide. And um, uh, if you have no idea, just pick the one uh, that has the shortest line because we're gonna call each direction individually. So we'll have a shorter line and we don't have to have everybody standing the whole service. Um, as always, um, we uh, ask people to keep their sharing um, uh, brief, but say your name. And we want you to provide you enough time to be able to completely share your thoughts. So. We don't need, to, don't need to be rushed, but we do want to keep things um, as brief as we can. Um, also, a reminder that you are, um, uh, it's okay to share water in silence. You don't necessarily have to um, say something. And um, what we've learned over the last couple of years, how many people remember to bring their water? We've got a few, right? So we happen to have a picture up here of water so that um, if you forgot and you still want to participate, we have water that can um, serve as a, um, a servant water for um, a special place um, that you experienced a moment of wisdom this summer. Um, and it'll stand in for that. So are there any questions before we move into the special music and then the water communion? Good. All right, let's have some special music.
Thank you, choir. You sounded wonderful with those harmonies. We'll begin um, calling the directions here in a moment, and as we do, we will start by seeding um, each um, uh, directional bowl with water that um, we collected and saved from last year's um, water communion. And this is a tradition that has been going on since I've been here. Reverend um, um, Art left me a bottle of water communion water, so it's uh, at least um, eight years old, and we add to it every year. So this is a, a wonderful, special thing. Um, and I'm going to um, start with uh, uh, having John come and introduce us to the East. Waters to the East. You bring us the rising sun and the infinite possibilities of new days, beginnings, and birth. You bring with you the element air that gently encourages spiritual growth, intelligence, and a gentle force for change. If the water that you brought with you today symbolizes a rebirth, a new beginning, a gentle experience of growth or change in your life, Please bring your water forward at this time and place it in the eastern bowl and briefly share your experience. This summer, my daughter researched all sorts of swimming holes. And every two or three days, we'd go swimming to a new one and explore Swan Lake, French Lake, Fairy Beach, you name it. We went there and had lots of picnics and lots of fresh air. After a winter of being stuck inside and worried about falling in the ice, it was wonderful to just swim in the waters and share time with my family. that tall, John. Um, <laughs> this virtual water, you see I didn't bring my water, um, is from the east. Tom and I uh, took a wonderful, amazing trip this summer through New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia. And what we realized was that as at the age we're at, our life is changing and transitioning, and it is the start of a new era for us together. Um, and it was a wonderful vacation that we've never had before, and we look forward to many more. Hi, uh, I'm Sue, and this is virtual water for Patty and me for t wonderful time spent at our camp on uh, Branch Lake. And unlike Leanne, which was a new and exciting adventure, ours was familiar, lots of friends visiting, and I look forward to doing the same thing again next year. My name is Catherine. Um, I just moved here from Lisbon Falls, and I'm starting at UMaine this semester, 10 years away from college, and um, I'm just kind of a new, entering a new phase of my life and uh, welcoming many new wonderful friends into my life, and I feel very blessed to be here.
Hi, again, I'm Josh. Um, so these, this comes from a stream in Presque Isle where I was going to school and I'm back here starting a new career. Um, and this stream was a place where we could gather strength when things got kind of heavy. There we go. Waters to the south. You bring us fire and the heat of passion. You bring to us the learnings that come from difficulties, turmoil, struggle, and suffering. You challenge us and sometimes wash away our sense of self-confidence and make us question even our own beliefs. Sometimes these challenges make us stronger and regard um, er, stronger and renew our hope. And sometimes these challenges wash away our hope and leave us feeling raw, worn out, in a place where we feel like we have to start all over again. If the water that you brought today is a symbol of struggle, hard times, difficult learning, please bring your water forward at this time and briefly share the wisdom that that water holds for you. Hi, I'm Catherine all of those things and then going back to the east of rebirth every day every season all those things Waters to the west, you speak to us in and movement, intuition, and visions of things that yet may be. You help us remember our loved ones who have passed, of dreams and memories, and the need to forgive and let go the things that hold us back from being ourselves. We experience you in the sunsets and the time of fulfillment that brings the joy of accomplishment at the day's end. If the water you bring today symbolizes dreams fulfilled, reconciliation, intuition, reconnection with loved ones, visions or prayers for things to come, Please bring your water forward and place it in the western bowl as you briefly share the significance that this water holds for you. Hello, I'm Erin. Um, my 14-year-old is passionate and obsessed with fishing. And last Monday, we decided to take off spontaneously and go fish the West Branch of the Penobscot. So anybody who has uh, teenagers knows that uh, truly perfect days spent together aren't real frequent. It can be a tough time. It was a perfect day. Um, 
my water represents this lake that I go to weekly during the summer. And I kayak there, and from the very first moment of buoyancy, I am transformed. And I mean literally and spiritually. I'm Rissa, and uh, we bring water, um, at least part of this is water from the land in Michigan where we go every summer um, and do a singing retreat. And um, this year I was privileged to be able to be part of creating the um, structure, the uh, infrastructure for making that happen. And to explain why this is visions of things that yet may be about 10 years ago, someone did a sermon here, and they talked about if we want to change the world, we ha need to have a vision of how the world can be, how we can live. And the group of women who create the infrastructure for this are living in intentional community. We come onto this land, there is nothing there. Everything we need, we bring. Everything we bring, we take away. And it's intentional community where each person's contributions are honored and recognized um, no matter how um, it, whether it's strength or whether it's knowledge everything is everyone is honored and uh, we can live like this and this is my vision of how the world can be this jar also virtually holds water from our blow up hot tub in which we have spent a much time just floating and watching the birds in the ash tree or watching the stars twinkle out in the evening and the many places that we go swimming and a few teardrops uh, for the loss of Deb Chapman. I'm Bruce. Uh, I have a little, uh, I'd like to have a little water put in on the east and the west, because I have a hard, hard time deciding. The, uh, when I was driving in this morning, uh, it was just really beautiful. I looked up into the sky, and we have those summer clouds that are billowing in the blue sky, and it just uh, kind of took my mind away from what's going on in the world, and to uh, nature and uh, sort of anchoring in nature and the permanence of it and the beauty of it. And my sense was that this is a great day to be alive and, and, and the gratitude for, for that. What are the chances that any one of us would be here today? Pretty slim, I think. So that's my appreciation for where I am today. And um, Bruce, I'm going to recruit you um, to help out here because we have a couple people who have shared online too. Um, one from uh, Defiance who says, my water is from Echo Lake. Our family has started a tradition for the last three summers and we've gone there after the birth of a new child. This summer was no different and we welcomed um, our last baby in May. Our family is navigating our new um, evolving relationships and places in the family. I enjoy watching them all grow together. So that sounds like a new beginning. So let's put that in the East. And then um, I have from Lori, um, 
My water is from Oceanside, California, where I spent a wonderful week at the Pacific Ocean um, with uh, my California and Maine family. So if we can put some water into the Western Bowl for Lori. And if there's anybody else on uh, line who wants to share, um, please type that in and I will try to keep an eye on here as we're finishing up. My own water is from the beach at Ogunquin, a town I've been going to for a week each summer for quite a while. If we, as you use, had uh, commandments like some other religions, I think our first commandment would just be tolerance. And Ogunquit is particularly special to me in part because I think it was the first place in Maine uh, to decorate itself with pride flags. And they kind of preach tolerance there. Waters to the north. You bring to us the attributes of being centered and grounded. Your cool waters run still and deep. You remind us to look deep within ourselves for guidance and understanding. Your spaciousness and clarity afford us a greater perspective on how things are. You bring to us awareness, the interconnectedness of all things, and how our actions send ripples out into the world, ripples that affect others and bring a deeper sense of meaning and maturity in our lives. If the water that you bring today symbolizes wisdom that you have discovered within, a greater sense of self-awareness, a perspective or a clearer sense of the interconnection that you have, or if you haven't figured out where you want to put your water yet, um, now is the time to bring your water forward uh, and briefly share the wisdom that that water symbolizes for you. Kayla, and this is rainwater I collected yesterday at a wood stacking party um, for a member of Women with Wings who is having some health issues. Hi. Um, oh, morning. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bennett. Um, I uh, kind of took Josh's water too, because I spent so much time up in Presque Isle this summer too, um, and this whole year. Um, I'm, I'm putting it in all four because I've been good, bad, and ugly and everything in between this year, so <laughs> embrace it all. My virtual water um, symbolizes, as I moved into my 60th year, I made a challenge to myself to visit at least 60 different waters. And in that process, I learned that sometimes I had to stroke really hard to get back to shore, and sometimes I could just go with the stream. Um, but I always enjoyed the frog's eye view. I'm Devin. Uh, I I like this community because it's it's what centers me really. 
Uh, it, that's what spiritual practice has been all about for me. And I, I know I haven't been here a lot recently, but I, I want to be here and I'll, I make an effort to be here when, when, I, when I can actually get up in the mornings. Um, and and I'll, I, I, pouring this water is kind of a visual commitment to, to myself to, to, to come here more often. I'm Rosie and this is Michelle and uh, the north represents the place where we have made our little home here in Orono, Maine and um, that is where we are centered and grounded and where we spent our summer uh, basically working on our, our little house and our little garden and it was an up and down summer with um, some sorrows including the loss of a very dear friend and uh, the loss of a beloved kitty. And, but there are a lot of joys in it as well, including wonderful UU auction dinners and uh, getting some dear friends over to our home to entertain them. So it's been a, a mixed summer, but um, you know, all in all, it's been a good summer. And I think we're feeling pretty contented at, at this moment. So I shall borrow some water and put it into the North Bowl. I'm Natalie Norton, and this water is from home. <laughs> and, um, uh, seven years ago, my husband and I moved from Bucksport uh, to Orono, Maine, Dirigo Pines, the uh, uh, retirement community. And we have a cottage which is on a pond in the community. and. That brings me great solace to its beauty to see it every day. Hi, I'm Mike. Uh, my virtual water is from the River Seine in Paris, where I was blessed this summer to have all three children, all three grandchildren, the mother of my children, uh, spend 10 days in Paris and the surrounding areas. And I was thrilled to have the grandchildren there, especially to go back to our, the land of our ancestors. They were more interested in Euro Disney, but um, anyway. Um, and my husband Kyle got the short straw and had to stay home, take care of my 91 year old mother. She turns 91 today. Uh, so he had to stay home and uh, really thankful for that, that he was able to do that because mom can't travel. So um, this is for all that. Good morning. My name is Betsy, and my water came from a place where I have felt so welcome with all, not the edifice, the people. The water came from this church. Andrew, I uh, have had a bit of a, an up and down year, really. I have some pretty significant med medical issues that some of you know about. And over the course of the summertime, I made several trips down to Boston and to Portland to try to address those things. And unfortunately, there are yet more hoops to jump through. So I am tired, spiritually and physically. 
but this water that I am borrowing comes from the sense that despite being weary, I'm still here. I'm tired and need support, and I'm unsure what that looks like, but I'm still here. Hi, I'm Kat, and this is Cora, and our water, which we forgot, is from the north. We spent a week up in the North Main Woods and this summer together as a family. It was really special. Where did we go, Cora? The river camps. And uh, there was a lot of water involved. Uh, my husband taught Cora how to fish, and uh, we had a really nice time just kind of resetting, regrounding ourselves, and um, unplugging. Water from camp. Um, I'm going to pour a couple um, uh, bits of water. Um, first, um, I want to share um, uh, greetings from uh, Justine, um, our friend who was here from Kenya last fall. Um, throughout the summer, he's been sending me regular pictures of the crops that are growing um, from the contributions that we made uh, to help support um, his, the farming project with the Maasai people in Kenya. So, um, and they've had a fair amount of water there to water those crops. Um, and then um, just yesterday, I received an email from uh, the um, Unitarian uh, uh, Society, or the Unitarian Movement in um, Hungary, the Hungary, Hungarian Unitarians, who um, just took another, yet another, um, uh, several truckloads of relief supplies to people in Ukraine. Um, and that's something else that we've been supporting. So water from the Carpathian Mountains um, and the people there. And um, finally, um, uh, I pour some water for myself for um, the fresh water of Northern Lake Huron. Um, and also the saltiness of uh, Penobscot Bay, where I'm continuing to learn to explore um, on my uh, sailboat. And um, those waters uh, symbolize for me um, tears of great joy and also the tears of some of the uh, pain and suffering that has unfolded um, this summer um, in our community. And um, I chose to do this from the north because there's also this sense of groundedness that, and hope that um, somehow there will be a way through all of this and all will be well. I'm now going to invite John to combine our waters um, direction by direction. So um, we'll collect the waters into our central unified bowl. First, we'll start with the waters from the east, symbolizing new beginnings and change. Then we'll add the waters from the south, symbolizing the heat of struggle and passion and the yearning for justice. And 
Next, we have the waters from the west, symbolizing earned wisdom, mourning, loss, and dreams that yet can be. And finally, we share waters from the north, symbolizing the clear coolness of deep reflection and connecting to the deep wisdom within our beings. I'm going to move this over. Please join me in the spirit of meditation and prayer. Spirit of life and love, we gather today to hold up the sacred element of water. Water that has the power to heal, to wash away the mistakes of yesterday, and to move us forward in striving to live into our potential of making the world a better place for all. May the outpouring of these shared waters renew our faith in the potential of the human spirit. And in doing so, may it also renew us in seeing that despite all of the crazy political and societal divisiveness in this world, there is still overwhelming evidence that what our Unitarian and Universalist ancestors taught us is true that people by their nature are innately good, and that goodness is magnified through the power of love. Our continued prayer is that we find ways to encourage each other in drawing out each other's goodness and to reduce harm caused by assumption, judgment, violent and destructive conflict. Just as we see the many things that divide us, may we also see love and kindness alive in the world when people come to the aid of their neighbors in the aftermath of natural disasters, when we see people around us who are willing to do the challenging work of self-reflection and engage in the effort to dismantle injustice and privilege and build healthy kind and fair connections among all people based on mutual respect. So, Spirit, as we begin this program year together, may each of us find ways to listen to the wisdom of the water and our mother, the earth, speaking to our souls. May we let their wisdom inform us and move us into action to reduce the warming of our planet and to build better connections among all people. May we seek to be like the water and not only give our loving, kind, and life-giving energy to each other, but also open up our hearts to receive it as well. By being present, compassionate, and loving justice people seeking who we are, may we come together, refresh our resolve, grow into the unfolding of the year that we may grow as a spiritual community in ways that renew us individually and as a spiritual community. Blessed be. Amen. I now invite you to stand as you are willing or able um, to sing our closing hymn, Wade in the Water.
as we extinguish our Unitarian Universalist chalice flame, symbol of faith, hope, love, connection, and the moisture that continues to renew and nourish our souls, let us be reminded that although our worship has come to an end, our service to each other and the world has just begun. Blessed be. I now invite you to join in singing our benediction. <laughs>